As a longtime fan of both Halo and the developer responsible for creating Halo, Bungie, you can imagine I'm pretty stoked for Destiny. It looks pretty fucking awesome. I did get to see all the coverage regarding it at E3, uh, but unfortunately I did not get a chance to take part in the recently held alpha for the game, which you could sign up for and then play on the PS3, I mean the PS4 and Xbox One probably and all that jazz. I just, I didn't get a chance to sign up, didn't even hear about it till the signups were over with and I was traveling and I had all these, you know, different things conflicting. I just, I didn't get a chance to do it. However, a friend of mine here on YouTube has he usually goes by the name Church of Brian, but you can find him at youtube.com slash dude with the voice. I will link it down below. He did get a chance to play the game, and I told him, hey, if you can make a video that's interesting about the game, if you can, you know, give me a little insights about it, I'll put it up on my channel. I'll include it in one of my videos. I'll let these beautiful people see what you think of the game. So he did just that. He made a little video for me, and I'm going to go ahead and let you check it out. Here you go. Greetings, I'm that guy who's not Chris, here today to tell you about how Bungie managed to keep creating Halo games without actually making Halo games. So I, perhaps like some of you, managed to participate in the Destiny Alpha build, which was a very enjoyable experience. But the more I played this, the more I realized there were a lot of similarities between this and another particular game. And that game is Halo. So allow me to walk you through this. First thing I noticed was assault rifles. Check. Floaty robot dudes with a blue eyeball. Check. A sexy sounding narrator. Check. The flood, or the hive. Check. Spartans and more Spartans. And of course, big giant space circles. Now make no mistake, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I very much enjoyed Halo. So for me anyway, this is very good news. And in the end, my opinion is all that matters anyway. And it's also my opinion that you should subscribe to my channel, The Church of Brian, youtube.com forward slash dude with the voice. I'm sure you can't imagine why I go by that name. Oh well. He really does make some pretty interesting videos about a wide array of topics. And if you want to check out his channel, please go to youtube.com slash dude with the voice. I will link it down below in the description section. As for the rest of this video, I don't really have any news topics that I want to talk about at the moment. There's nothing too interesting going on, nothing that I can make, you know, entertaining commentary about. I'm just, I'm, I'm totally bored with all the stuff that's going on right now, to be perfectly honest. However, I am working on a lot of reviews of horror games, because I've been getting really into the horror spirit lately, and I have been building a new set for Investigamer. I've been slowly adding on to it, which you may have noticed over the past few videos. This shelf is the newest edition, and it's got pretty much my entire uh, video game collection on it. I don't have that extensive of a, video, of a video game collection, because for the most part, when I was growing up, I rented games. I was, I was poor you know, off and on. I wasn't that poor, but, you know, I wasn't loaded. I couldn't just go out and buy a $50, $60 game every day, you know, so I don't have that big of a collection. I have a pretty big collection on Steam, but one thing I noticed while I was going through this collection and I was trying to, you know, fit everything onto this glass shelf for a background prop in the video was something strange with GameCube games. I don't know if the Wii games follow this same pattern, or the Wii U games follow the same pattern because I don't have any of those on hand anymore. I sold my Wii games and I never had a Wii U. Oh wait, no. I had two Wii U games and I sold them with my Wii U when I sold that to my friend. So, check something out here. You see this? These are GameCube games. This is Sonic Heroes. Pretty shitty game right here, but... Uh, notice anything? The GameCube label is on the bottom. The bottom of the game. Hey, that's strange. That's, that's weird. It's peculiar. Because guess what? This is a PS2 game. It's on the top. Minor change, right? Yeah, you know, no, no one would really care about that. That's kind of annoying. Uh, to some people, maybe, who have OCD, but it's, it's not really that big of an issue, right? Well, until you take a look at the fact that PC games also have their label on the top. Oh, and what's this? Xbox original games, label at the top. Xbox 360 games, label at the top. PS3 games, label at the top. What the? Uh, PS1 games, label at the top. I, you know? 
Why? Why is it the GameCube decides they're gonna put their label on the bottom? I have this huge row of all these like uh, labels based on what system they're on going up the top and then suddenly we have these games. Oh, what are those on? I have no idea. Oh, let me look down here. Oh, it's, it's fucking GameCube. That shitty console. Why, Nintendo? Why, why, why? I don't understand. Anyways, I don't have much else to talk about, so I'll see you in my review of Outlast, which should be my next video. Hopefully releasing this Thursday as long as I don't die of a heart attack, so see you soon.